Viewer discretion is advised. Happy Saturday. You are listening and or watching Pwncast. This is episode 99 and we are in patch 6.2.3. Tonight we are going to be talking about all the latest in Legion news. There was a brand new build that happened this week which brought us a lot of goodies. Uh, One of a beloved and favorite community members, uh, one of the... World of Warcraft CM shockingly leaves Blizzard uh, with very little information given. Uh, more speculation on that later on in the show. We're also going to be covering the Paladin Order Hall. And I did take a look at some PvP in Legion via Alpha this week. So we're going to have that and much, much more. So make sure you guys stay right here. <laughs> World of Warcraft trade chat. Troll-based defenses are considered especially heinous. In Azeroth, the dedicated players who call out these asshats are members of the lead squad known as the Pwncast Podcast. These are their stories. Welcome back. I did bring the Riders of Rohan with me. Uh, haven't decided if that's a good thing or a bad thing yet. Uh, they've been a little well behaved right now. I'm not really sure what the deal is, but I'm just going to take it because I don't get the good behavior very often. Uh, I did bring the Death Knight who, try as he might, is still not the beloved. Like it. No. No. You can hear me fine, right? <clears throat> okay, good. Uh, no, I'm still. It's. I still, I, I'm on a firm belief right now that they need to make a change to it so that we go and anything has like to do with two expansions pre- previous just needs to be changed for the reputation. It should be a countdown, but I'm slowly but surely getting there. Uh, I think I'm at 47. I got a quite a, quite a while to go, but hopefully I'll be there before Legion drops. Nice. It's sad. Sounds. Nice. Uh, your audio is. Like, doing stuff on its own, it's a little, like, static in the background. Maybe you could work on that Why intro. I don't really know what's going on. I don't know if I'm the only one that heard that. I might be crazy. Uh, highly possible. Well, yeah. we're glad that you're here uh, with a nice, fancy new background. like that. <laughs> I'm working on my green screen. It's not quite there yet. That's going to be a scary... I'm uh, really afraid to see how that's going to work itself out. Uh, I did... Uh, in case you guys didn't notice, I did bring the shaman who finally got out of rehab. Uh, because, you know, last week... Man... He was high I'm, as a I'm, kite. I know. I want to apologize about that. That was really poor performance on my behalf. But that being said, it was, just, it was needed. And I feel a lot better... And now we have everything under control. So, I'm, look, I'm all clear-eyed and Did happy and talkable. Did you say hi to Lindsay talkable. while you were there? Did you get to see her or her mom? <laughs> uh, well, there were some things there, you know, maybe we become good friends. No. <laughs> Not surprising. <laughs> no, no, no. No, it's been a good week. It, it's been, been, uh, I've been a lot more pain-free this week. So, Somebody everything's under a control. Breather. So, I don't know. One of you needs to fix your shit. Who is it? Hot st- if you know it who it is, me. speak the truth. I don't know where Jim. you are. Oh, Jim, turn down the sensitivity a little bit on your heavy breather, Mike. <laughs> Poor this Jim. This guy. Or if, you know, if he, if he would get a desk, he, would ha- he has a fancy new mic, guys. So, maybe you guys can give him a little bit of motivation. Uh, all of you that are watching live, maybe give him some motivation via the chat for him to... Uh, to go in and I want to apologize too about last week. I think it's my audio. It just like auto adjusted back to really loud. I hope I'm not loud like that. Now we can't hear you. <laughs> so it's just sorry. somewhere be between down. where you are and where you are would be like this. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear yeah. you now. I'm going to let you work that out and I'm going to go ahead and just move right along uh, to the boomkin who's <laughs> suffering from a wee bit of mythic blues. Yeah, um, so this week we, we're progressing back through uh, re-clearing, and we get back to Manoroth, right? We, we do, we've been doing well. We kill Manoroth with one person alive for the last 1%, and it was our Enhancement Shaman, and he kind of saved the day because we were all getting really frustrated that we hadn't killed it yet. And then that happened, and we are oh my god, don't you dare make us go through that again. Killed it, happy news. 
uh, then everything that dropped was terrible. So, yeah. Make your camera stop doing that, please. <laughs> These guys are going to give me a meltdown today. I literally... Oh, we were being well-behaved. Well, the camera's <laughs> we really not... Stop it. <laughs> Kindly. I'm trying not to be mean. Oh, my camera. Yeah, your camera. Yeah, yeah your camera. I work on that. It's awkward. Guys, I'm it's have been a rough so day. Many I, I don't know what to well, say. Um, I'm I think not I know a title. I, you what? I think I know a title for the episode. What? Technical Difficulties. It's been... <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. <sighs> no, that's a good title. Thank you, because I always struggle with, uh, with the title. But I did also bring uh, the monk who has fixed his microphone, but I did bring the monk that needs hooked on phonics, because apparently he can't read or write. Oh my goodness. I made a video for the mechanical axe break. Am I allowed? I hope I'm not. The mechanical no, axe beak, excuse me. And I called it the axe break throughout the whole video. And a viewer was nice enough to tell me I said it wrong and spelled it wrong. So I had to remove the video. Don't feel bad. I say shit wrong all the time. And I don't even mind. I just embraced it. It's like, oh, Jesus Christ. There was a, I'm going to make you feel better. One time we posted an article for the PDQ in the very, very, very beginning stages of PDQdom, and we spelt Lich King wrong. So there's that. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. I all remember right. that. It was I a was, glorious day. I was so mad. I was really, I was very <laughs> angry that we misspelled that. It was not a good time in Bell Land. Uh, well, we do, I want to, I want to get, I want to get the information regarding the CM that we lost this week kind of out of the way. I was really excited to be able to talk about this on the show. I couldn't, we can't really say much as a community um, about how we feel or what we kind of might be thinking on our page or our website because we have to report the news as it's reported. Podcast is really the time where we kind of get to just talk about how kind of how we, you know, how we feel about it. So in case you've been living under a rock and are not aware, um, CM Zarim, which I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, don't really give a shit if I am, uh, the skull, everybody knows, the floating skull. So he left Blizzard. Typically, when this happens, and when I say typically, I mean assuming things are all well in Blizzard land, an official blue forum post happens, and it's usually from that specific community manager, giving the fare thee wells and the goodbyes and the teary, I had a great day and time and life and, and all those things. That just didn't happen this time. And it was a very small post. Um, you know, it was a very, basically, here's what he tweeted in case you don't know. Thanks for all the well wishes. I'm no longer with Blizzard and won't be using this Twitter account anymore. You can reach me at Talking Congas. That was his goodbye to a community that he loved. Now, for, those love of you, that for those of you who don't know, let me give you some background. His name is Jonathan Brown. He was in the BlizzCon group. He's been in all the a lot of the major World of Warcraft groups. You're talking about a guy who's in the thick of it with the people. He's not one of your community managers that's so unattainable that you never get to see him. He's kind of always been kind of down here with us. He's he's the guy that, that would communicate and talk with us. So I... Uh, it begs the question, what happened? And for them so, not to, to make so much guessing. Yeah, and for them not to make any announcement whatsoever is kind of scary. You know, it just automatically boom. He and it was like two o'clock in the morning Eastern time. So it wasn't even like during prime time that they said, Oh, by the way, I'm leaving. It was it's it, it's kinda odd. He was there for I mean, two thousand four, guys, this is beginning stages of of all things that have been created here <clears throat> now i want to make sure I that i'm clear i don't want to speculate on any gossipatory stuff right i don't even know if gossipatory is a word but i just invented it i don't want to speculate on any kind of like things it just <clears throat> it was really abrupt for somebody who literally just celebrated the 25th anniversary very publicly very openly um i happen to be friends with him on his his facebook and he was all of his stuff is always team blizzard so it, it is now obviously there's things we don't know about there's things that happen behind the scenes that we are not necessarily privy to as a community because we're just the players they don't outside of them taking our money they at, at the best of times they don't they're not really concerned with kind of how we feel about their community managers but I never thought I'd see the day, so it does make you it does make you wonder what's happening internally. Is is it the direction they're going in the company? Is there a direction that's happening because of the shift in priorities? I guess we're gonna use the word priorities because we're trying, you know, we're trying to be a little bit, you know, less I think what happened was he used Crit's mess in the bathroom and then didn't replace the toilet paper. Um that I mean 
you know, you don't want to get in the, the shitty side of people. And this comes on the cusp of us losing, you know, last year we lost, um, you know, we lost Micah, which is Bashok. I mean, he, mm -hmm. they, they're besties. For those of you who don't know, those guys roll together. So now he's over at NC, NC Soft or NCE or NCA or some shit. It's an, another little gaming thing they got going on over there. But, and I don't know if, I think I'm just hoping that it wasn't some sort of, some sort of huge internal thing that's going to lead to us losing more community managers. Um because it seems like all the vets are disappearing which don't get me wrong sometimes you need this to happen and i'm not talking about him specifically i am talking about the the veterans of the community sometimes you do need to make way for a newer generation right you need to make way for for new fresh eyes which i'm pretty sure who was the last person that left um one of the things that i can't remember off the top of my head but one of the things they have said is now we're going to make room for people to have a fresh perspective they're not so in in the mix of it because they've been doing this for so long that oftentimes your perspective becomes jaded or skewed because you're you've been going through this with pissed off people happy people like you've been doing this roller coaster ride so it's, it starts to affect you but i he was pretty much it was a shock and even though it was a shock to us, maybe this was something in the working for him. Maybe he was building up to it. Not everybody likes their job. You can love what you do and you could hate your job. You could love what you do and you could hate who you work for. So I don't know that we're ever going to get that answers, guys. I don't know that we're ever going to. I'd like to see your guys' beliefs. So if, if you guys are watching live, tell us how you feel. If you're watching this on YouTube or listening on iTunes, uh, make sure you guys comment and tell us kind of where you're coming from. Look, you haven't rang in, which is odd. Uh, because I haven't got my tinfoil hat with me. Like, I don't know. I sort of sit on the side of it. Just it doesn't sit right with me. Like, you, like you said, like they they always make a forum post. They always have some kind of official announcement. They usually say it in the middle of the day or first thing in the morning, so that they have time to respond in the afternoon, be it on the forums or anything like that. And this time around, it's just like, oh, hey, I'm out. See ya. Bye. Mm -hmm. I, like obviously, it's going to be a while before we find out what what you know motivated this all to happen. Um, I just hope it, it's something plain and simple, like uh, you know, it, it was a rush decision, and and he's moving on to greener pastures, as opposed to like I've had some discussions with people that are saying, uh, like you mentioned, it, it's part of the um, the change of focus of Blizzard. Or their parent companies. Uh, maybe he had a personal disagreement. Maybe you know something, something along those lines. Like I would hate for it to be a negative thing that's going to affect Blizzard overall, and it's just one person. Uh, you know, the dominoes falling one at a time, sort of thing. So I don't know. I, I guess this one's just going to take a bit of time to sort of hear about and figure out. But ho hopefully, it's nothing that dramatic or serious. It's ditch job twenty sixteen, guys. <laughs> well, and, the, and the thing to note here, and I, I don't, I mean, in direct correlation with losing people, um, Spanks talking a, a couple things that he's put out there of the people that we've lost that I was struggling to try to remember. Uh, the majority of them in nature have been CMs, though. So, I mean, that is mm -hmm. that is the nature of things. Um, you know, you don't ever, we don't see really large losses with the exception of the kind of change that the Blizzard saw last over the last two years um, in their you know, their internal teams. But, like, you have these large guys. You have Ian Hazakostas. You have, um, you have Holinka, who torments me daily. Uh, you have Chad, which is Celestial. And, I mean, you have, you still have a lot of your big people as far as inside, which makes, it does often make you wonder what dynamics on a community management aspect are, are, but on, are different. on that same token, like, a lot of the, the names that you just mentioned, they're, high, way, they're higher up the food chain still. Like, if I was in their position earning the kind of money and the jobs that they had, like, I don't really care. I'm not leaving my job for anything. Whereas community really managers... Though? Community managers, to me, are far more important than the developers. I'm not... I'm not before oh, people oh, freak definitely. out, I know people are but, listening and like, oh, God, did she just say that? That's not what I mean. I just mean those are, the, those are the attainable people to us. Those are the guys at BlizzCon that we can reach out and touch. We can take pictures with easily. Yes, I know we can take pictures with all the developers, but not so much. Not so much. They're, they're not... But they're, but they're replaceable. Okay, that's even. That, that, that's the difference. You can, yeah. But even when Greg Street was there, Greg Street was lead game designer. Uh, he went by the name Ghostcrawler, and he was probably the most. He was the one that was out there the most, and you know when it came to game design, uh, always answered people on Twitter, never shied away from the community, 
and even when he left and he jumped over to Riot Gaming to work for League of Legends, there was more of an announcement. There was more of, hey, we're sorry to see you go. I'm sorry to hear that. You know, wish we could have kept you. And there was everybody actually putting out there from Mike Morheim to uh, to everybody just going, hey, I really wish you would stick around, but, you know, good luck on your adventure. And But nothing for Zarm. And that that's that's... Like I said, that concern there uh, of why he left, you know, was it some irreconcilable differences between him and, you know, the, the, the direction that the Blizzard is going? Or was it just a mutual thing and he didn't want to make a big scene? It, it, it could be just something as benign as that. That he just said, you know what, I'm done. I don't want to do it. He just said, fuck it. He woke up and had a moment. He had a fucking Jerry Maguire moment, right? I'm taking the fish. Who's coming with me? Like, maybe that's just well, what happened. After, after 11 years, he literally woke up on a, fr- on a Friday morning and was going, you know what? I'm just like, I'm gonna fucking I feel like going back on Monday. But I think and, he and found he, out he, probably he, where the money was before he quit, Everybody's maybe. shit-talking your mic. Mm. Like he's, um, I think he's woken up on the Friday and done the half half bike thing. He's Stone. gone into the office and, fuck you, fuck you, that's you're cool, now, fuck if you, I'm out. If I manage to leave a situation, I want you all to know that that's how I go out. I don't go quietly into the night. You're not going to get some bullshit tweet from me talking about I'm done with podcast. I'm rocking this whole motherfucker if I ever choose to go out because that's just the nature of the things. I don't go quietly. So if, if, I, if I ever worked for World of Warcraft, I would never go quietly. I would be all the things. But, I mean, probably also why would. I don't work for them. <laughs> well, we work for them. I mean, I mean, we work. So I want to read you guys something funny. In my, in my uh, attempt to try to find some type of blue, any acknowledgement from anybody in blue regarding him leaving, somebody had posted, you know, Zarim is gone, and there's this big, huge, long 20-page forum post. But I had forgotten about something that Zarim had posted once. It's long forgotten, and I wanted to read it because it, I read it earlier, and I was just reminded of kind of a funny time, so I wanted to read it. He had done like a little, like a, a gamer prayer. So if you guys know it, that's awesome. If you don't, hopefully it'll make you laugh. Uh, So this was posted by him originally. Uh, Our developer, which art in Blizzard, Ghostcrawler be thy name. Thy balance come. Thy buffs be done in Azeroth as it is in Blizzard. Give us this day our daily quest and forgive us our QQ as we forgive those who QQ against us. And lead us not into spec stacking, but deliver us from RNG. For thine is the balance and the and the nerfs and the purple loot for patches and patches. Amen. <laughs> Am I the only one that was so, absolutely so simple and effective? <laughs> I, 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 I dig it. I, I can get behind it. I can support it. I thought that was funny. I'm going to make sure it, that I am- use that. Amen. Yeah, everybody, everybody amen. So, I want to just say, I know he doesn't listen to us, but I do know that he knows who we are, um, and I, we think you're awesome. Whatever it takes, wherever life takes you, man, as long as it brings you joy, that's all that matters. But in the end, all we could say is, bye, Felicia. Well, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's two. One more, and you're out. <laughs> So this Legion, this latest Legion alpha build, I said Legion as if it's like something. Uh, (laughs) I'll post that link right now. Um, Legion. So uh, it brought a lot of changes. And I did have a visual into alpha um, and was able to see some things and do some things and, and, and be involved in some things. But they did release uh, one of the new arenas, which is the uh, Ashamane's Fall. Now, I got to tell you, it's beautiful. If you're a healer, you're going to fucking love this map because there's so many things for you to LOS. It's amazing. And I actually stayed alive quite a bit, which we're going to talk about that later during my PvP segment. But I did manage to stay alive. I was the last man standing in an arena. I couldn't tell you what I was playing, to be honest, because I was trying to just look at things, so I wasn't really paying attention to the fight. But, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about that much later. But it was, um, it was pretty awesome, I'm going to have to say. So we'll, we'll have more on... Uh, I did go and, and look at how the PvB, PvP situation is looking now in Legion, so they could give you guys some pretty good feedback. The new world map was finally revealed. Up until now in Legion, you weren't able to see it. It was finally revealed... I got to say, there was a couple people that posted, oh, Maelstrom's not in the center. I do have a problem with it not being in the center. I'm not going to lie. I think the way that they moved it over was a little bit... Stupid? 
Well, I mean, which one's harder to move over? A tiny little swirl on the map or an entire continent of things? Did you say continent? You, know? you said continent. 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 Yeah. continent. Why <sighs> did they do that, though? They've got, like, they... Fuck, they Why don't even have to the, the same like, map. I don't understand, Why not guys? go right down that way or, like, go three maps over that way somewhere? I don't like, it's a stupid it's... place to put it. It's never was... First of all, that thing is not the scale. Ever. Ever was it meant to be a scale map of what the place should look like. But where they have the broken aisles and where they're sitting, while they should, in my opinion, be a little bit more to the east, this is how they're going to try to tie it into the rest of the map, though. From the way that map looks like there, that, the, that north end and the broken aisles are not that far off, and that's the way it should have been. But it should have actually been closer, in my opinion, to the Eastern Kingdoms. But it's just a map. How do you? Yeah, it is just a map. But how do you explain the shift? Listen, I don't know real life geography. I couldn't tell you the difference between UK and Plate. Australia, and I don't give a fuck because that's just me. I don't. Go apparently, they neighbors. But everybody, I know. Me. Apparently, they neighbors. When I look at that map, how how do you? Play tectonics. But as as a. Hey. What am I? I'm searching hey, for the right word. RP, right? If I'm getting into this this role that I'm playing in World of Warcraft, you can just move shit around at your whim with no explanation. Oh, it was always there. The, Surprise. Do you remember the Japanese tsunami? After that earthquake, Japan shifted at eight feet. Deathwing could have just shifted it over a little bit. We don't oh. know that. You did, how could no, no way. There's no Japan way. Japan is literally moved eight foot. Kingdoms. To okay, North that's Ring valid. They're, they are talking about the water and the ship. Winter. That's all very valid. I totally get that. I don't know. How do you not, so, how do you not see the broken Hold on. Arms? Hold on. I, well, yeah, that's one thing that I had an issue with. But, to be fair, if you want to break it down into who is drawing these maps, who are... How are they drawing them? They don't have, you know, a fucking... Cracky crackhead. Yeah, they don't have it. They're, they're rudimentary, you know, like, oh, well, this is here, this is here, this is here, means. this is here, you know, like, they're, they're, they're moving, like, they're, they're just gonna put things, all right, well, this is here, this is the Eastern Kingdoms, Northern's above us, so we're gonna put it at the very top, the Kalimdor's on the very far left, you know, that, it's just, it's not too skeleton, it's not gonna be correct, so, I mean, you know, if they have to shift something over to throw some broken aisles in there, then they're good. But bit of all the like, they yeah. the ones who designed the map. They literally could just go, "Oh, the map's actually this much longer down the bottom. Let's put something down there." Like it, I only care from an RP sense. I, that and I can't believe that since Wrath, uh, that no Tuscar guy sitting out there fishing on a Sunday morning has gone. What's that in the distance? Oh, fuck me, that's an island. We haven't been there. I'll get my little wood canoe and go for a bit of a paddle. Oh, look at that, new island. <laughs> so I oh, look how they discovered um, Australia. Next week, I'm oh, going to really... Guys, this week I'm going to work on transitions and I'm going to work on overlaying some of the stuff we're talking about to be able for you guys to see it as we're talking. I need to learn how to do stuff a little bit easier while it's live. So I'm going to work on that so I can start visually showing you stuff as we're talking about it because I think that'll make it better. Uh, so I'll make that myself Al, this week. I Al, know. I know. I'm sorry. Let's... No, no, no. Let us work out the microphone situation <laughs> first and then we'll get advanced. Buy a okay? fucking desk. That'll work out the microphone situation. <laughs> Buy a desk. Problem solved. Uh, just kidding. I'm just being mean at this point. No, uh, you're good. No, I... It's we, need, nice. we need to go fund me for him. I do. We do. And I do completely understand uh, uh, the current and the, the shift and all the things that happen. And I get it. And I'm sure as we're going into it, it's probably going to explain it. It was just a little off-putting for me because I wasn't expecting it necessarily where it was, where the stuff was shifted at. So it's a little, I, you know. I'll, foresee, I'll tell you right now, I'm going to foresee another problem whenever we go further into expansions. And, and it, was, it was brought up by, actually, Ian, uh, the Redshirt guy, said that, you know, okay, so we're moving south. The further we go in south, the more tropical it's getting. Does that mean that we've not even hit the equator? That and there is bikini season. I mean, I'm in, but does, right? But is there another, like, like an Antarctic area? Because is, are we going to find more places down further south? Yeah. So now here we're going to run into a problem. Pandera, Pandaria, rather, is not going to be where it's at now. They're going to end up shifting that northward, and people are going to flip out again. Well, and it's just, it, it's just because they don't have the map completed. And I, they know where they want the things. They know where they have to be lore-wise. 
if they move something a little bit further to one way or another, it's really not going to be game breaking or even an RP breaking. It's not going to really throw it off. Stone wants me to use hotkeys for the scenes. I know I need to do that, but do you know how bad my memory is? It's going to get ugly real quick. I'm going to work on that, I promise. I'll just have to put stuff up. You just need to label them. Chaos Bolt. All right, I'm going to hit my Chaos Bolt. Now, those button. I know really, really well because I have my gamepad. I don't use my keyboard for that. Anyway, that's for another time. Yeah, oh, I, I think. it was a little bit rough, um, but I mean, I guess we're going to just roll with the punches. Um, Duncan Jones has been releasing on his Twitter pretty randomly, and I'm assuming this is for hype and PR purposes. Uh, he's been releasing kind of some behind-the-scenes stuff. In regards to the movie, and uh, I think I'm liking what's happening here. We got some overshots of what I think might have been Dollaran. I'm not 100% sure. Um, you guys seen that Cobalt, You Take No Candle, The Wanted. They had The Wanted poster. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys follow Duncan. I'm assuming since you all are World of Warcraft fans that you've probably, uh, you don't live under that type of rock. But it's coming, guys. The hype is so real that we are literally months away from seeing this on the big screen. I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty stoked. So excited. I'm just more stoked because I'll see it a week before you look. Ooh. You should just spoil it. Spoilers. Let me help you out with that. I see one and raise you one. Oh, that's awful. So what else we got? That's one bloke. That's one. If you guys haven't been, <laughs> if you guys are PVPers and you've been watching the GCD TV, make sure you keep up on it. Uh, they had tournament number three. We had day one today of the Europe uh, Pro League. Pretty good stuff going on there. They had a stunning upset. Um, or, uh, several teams, actually, a stunning upset. I can't find the ending ladder. So I'm going to have to, I looked literally up until a few minutes before the show and they haven't updated their ladder. They had a lot of technical difficulties during the tail end of the uh, broadcast. So I don't know. Um, I, I tuned in like the second half. So uh, make sure that you guys go to their website and subscribe for the schedule and stuff um, as that kind of gets rolled out. Okay. Um, I... I had to go I'm into, sure. I had to, well, I mean, I had to go into alpha to do PVP because I promised that I would go look at PVP, which we're going to, we're going to talk about that during my segment. But I, mean, I want to talk to you guys about the Paladin, uh, the Paladin Hall. Ooh. I had to do the whole quest for the artifact. I'm not going to give you guys any spoilers. So I'm not going to tell you anything about the quest. I'm not going to do, go through any of that. So nobody has to worry about spoilers. I'm strictly just going to talk about the visuals inside the order hall. However, if you are a Paladin, it's going to be pretty fucking amazing because the this specific one, normally you get the order hall and the artifact are separate, at least for the ones I've done. But this one, the artifact linked to the, the order hall. So I had to actually go through the quest line to get through the artifact. I don't melee, so it was really awful. Uh, and I don't know. I can't even melee on a good day, let alone on a class that has no information on how to play it because it's an alpha. But I did get a chance to check out the hall. And oh, so uh, it's the Hall of the Guardian is the order hall and it's in a lights hall chapel i'm not even a paladin and everything was paladin-esque here right i was not disappointed with this hall uh, wasn't disappointed at all they had uh uther the Lightbringer. um i'm not even gonna try to say any of half of these names guys because this is just gonna be a bad time for me it's just gonna be an embarrassment but all the typical npcs that you would want to see are there i'm pretty sure lichen's gonna talk about some lore so he could probably give you more information as soon as i'm done with this so there's these guards so when you're walking down right because it's it's the holy light so you're in a, it's a giant you know cathedral type situation so when you're walking anywhere you walk your guards bow to you as you're walking i literally was like hmm this is way better than a garrison like these guys are bowing to me so you have a whole line of guards and the guards as you walk past them they just bow to you and i was like oh that's right okay okay i can I could make this happen in real life. We could we could make my children bow to me when I walk down the hall. But it was so awesome that they would bow that you really kind of feel like, oh, okay, I'm important here. I'm somebody that, that matters. Um, the artifact stand, which your table, whatever, your interaction for where you do your artifact talents is on, you know, a column with the holy light going over the column, which is pretty cool. Uh, I liked the... Uh, I like the fantasy of the way that they integrated that. Uh, I did also get a follower for my order hall, so I got to see that kind of how that happens. Um, the follower essentially 
there's a, a board uh, behind where some random is standing and you click it and you get to send that follower to one of the zones. I sent him to, to High Mountain just because it was just there. And then that starts you on that quest to where you can go do that quest when your follow go, follower um, goes out and scouts. Now, I hadn't been able to see anything, any other follower related stuff for the hall, like with the Monk or the Warlock, because I didn't start those quest lines. It was already done for me. So this one, because I got to physically go through the whole motions of acquiring that, I actually got to see kind of how that um how that laid about the inside some of the rooms are typical of what you would see inside the cathedral the in stormwind right you have the rooms with the libraries you have really pretty spinning globes um that like glow a really really pretty turquoise people sitting at the table reading books like pretty typical um especially with something you would see in lights hope so if you're a paladin, you're definitely not going to be disappointed because it was beautiful. Uh, and I don't paladin very well, but uh, yeah, pretty pretty legit. I have one. Well, yeah, it's and it, I, at this point, I think just for the class halls, I think I'm just going to have to have one of every stuff so that I can go and do secret class hall stuff. But I know that Lycan, uh, with that, has got some nice paladin yes. Paladin lore that we don't really talk. We don't do a lot of pally stuff. So I think that this is going to be a real nice. Uh, I think this is going to be real nice. Um, yeah, and actually on your class hall too. With that, uh, for those who've been asking since BC times and vanilla times, yes, this is where we're going to see General Tralian. Um, Tralian and Lyria, Lyria are the missing couple that went through the portal and are finally coming back in Legion. This is where you're finally eventually going to get to see them. So. Big things are coming for that. It, it's really nice to see them actually put a lot of work in. The, and the pictures uh, again are stunning. Um, but just wanted to go over real quick what the what the paladin lore is, and and there's some confusion of why um, the paladins wield the light and what their connection is with the light. Now, during the first war, uh, you had Archbishop. I, I know I'm going to mess up his last name, but it's Alonsus Fail or Fool. Uh, he was the head of the Holy Order of the Northshire Clerics prior to the First War. Uh, his apprentice was actually the first paladin, which was Uther the Lightbringer, of course. Um, now, they were suffering heavy casualties during the Second War, and they needed to fight off the orcs and their warlocks and, and the undead that, that had started with the Scourge. Um, they actually got together and started the order called the Knights of the Silver Hand. And this is, of course, after Tyr. And we've, met, we've talked about Tyr. What was that? Uh, what did I say? About three weeks ago? Sorry about the mic. About three weeks ago, we talked about Tyr, and we learned uh, about him um, as a, what is that, as a Titan Watcher. Um, now, the Paladins are a hybrid class. They are a hybrid of warriors and priests. Um, they were taught, that's, of course, and you can draw your correlations, too, of why you have Protection Paladins and Protection Warriors, Holy Paladins and Holy Priests, is they are truly the first hybrid class. Now, one thing that was special with them, uh, they were actually Im immune to the plague, and, of, and all diseases, of course, due to the light being permeated within. But many members of the, uh, the Knights of the Silver Hand actually survived the push of the Scourge. Unfortunately, um, we have Arthas Menethil, Menethil, which is, of course, the Lich King. He, uh, when he was corrupted, disbanded the Order after Uther refused to help him kill all the residents of Stratholme. And we get to see that in the calling of Stratholme, and that's exactly what's going on. Arthas, uh, after he had done clearing out pretty much everybody in Stratholme and getting back to Lordaeron, killed off many of the paladins after returning, including Uther. Um, there were a few remaining, um, and they were... They're still around, and they still go to the Order of the Silver Hand. Um, and the, most of them, of course, they were all humans at the beginning as well. And, they, and the dwarves actually had followed suit in with them as well, and they, they became paladins too. Uh, there are a couple other ones out there. There's the Hand of Argus, which is the home of the Draenei Paladins. And then we also have uh, the Blood Elves, which the Blood Elves are the fourth race to become Paladins. And that, that was introduced during uh, BC, and they actually became uh, to a group called Order of the Blood Knights. Now, up until this time, no Horde class could become a Paladin. The way the Blood Elves were actually able to obtain their access to the light is they captured a Nuru by the name of Muru. Um, 
what they did is they I know it, 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 it's a terrible mix up and I try to reword that a couple different ways but the, the name of the Nauru was Maru. Now what they did is they captured him they put him underneath of where the Muru. paladins were. Not Muru. Not Muru. Okay, but got Muru. it. Okay. M U R U. I thought you were trying to allude to a Torin. Getting paladin. there in a second. Okay. It just sounds distinctly <laughs> Australian. It's a little bit, yeah. <laughs> but um what they did is they captured this this Nauru and they didn't give it an option, but they extracted the ability to use the light right out of this captured Nauru. Um, but with this, this actually led many to believe that the light and the Nauru are one and the same. Um, like I said, it's, it's the only time it's, you know, it's when we started seeing the Burning Crusaders, when we saw the Horde finally being allowed to be paladins, as well as the Alliance getting into shamanism as well, because before then, no, uh, no Alliance member could be a shaman. The fifth race that we get into is the Tauren Sunwalkers. Now, they came into, into being after a Pony Brightmane, which was a priest, and Tahu Sagewind had a very long, deep theological discussion. It's about the same time of Cataclysm on the moon worship and their reverence to the light. And it was actually from this understanding with the Sunwalkers that they were able to bring out the light. Um, this uh, finally allowed another class to be opened up in the Horde arsenal to become a to become a paladin, and there's been long discussions on that as well of whether or not Tap Torrent should have been paladins to begin with because of the whole moon worship. But if you actually follow the the quest line in, in there and the the dialogue between the two, it, it makes actually a lot of sense. Now there are a couple other orders out there as well. You have the Argent Dawn, and you also have the Scarlet Crusade. The Scarlet Crusader are very particular in the recruitment, and I would say almost a bit cultish. Um, they do not allow anybody in there except for humans, and they're, no pun intended, hell-bent on just destroying everything that has to do with the Scourge, including the Forsaken. Um, they have big problems with them. The Argent Dawn, however, will recruit any race into the Order, including the Forsaken themselves. Um, so we actually see them form up a little bit further as well as we get into, what was it, um, Wrath of the Lich King, and you follow your, your, your questing as you go through Ice Crown, we see that the Knights of the Silver Hand filmed, formed up with the Argent Dawn. They formed the Argent Crusade that was uh, to try to fight back the uh, forces of Arthas. But wait. You know, we discussed everything so far of how everybody's gotten their light, and except for the Jernai, and how they were become, able to become paladins. Or again, we go back to the Nauru and the light. So we have Velen, which was a, a priest out of the three brothers. You had, again, Velen, Archimon, and Kil'jaeden. And Velen had actually asked the Nauru to give him more power to fight off the other two and to save his people. This, again, brings up two questions. First of all, who were the original paladins? If you follow the times, the timetable on Azeroth compared to the timetable of the Jernai, um, it actually tells you right now that the Jernai were the original paladins. They were first to get the, uh, to mix the, basically the two classes together. And also, again, leads us back in that conversation of whether the Nauru and the Light are one and the same. Um, this also brings in the conversation, too, is the Dark Nauru associated with the Old Gods. Um, I'm hoping with, as we delve further into Enzoth and some of the Old Gods that are coming up in Legion, as well with all the artifact information, of course, you know, we're getting, you know, what is it? Um, what's the name of the sword? Asperger? Thank you, Ashbringer. Wow, I cannot believe I drew a blank on that. As we're getting into some of these other ones, I'd like to see us learn more of the origins of light, only because there are so many different correlations and so many different tangents we could go off to on who actually gives the power to the paladins and where they draw it from. And I think, and this is not spoilery at all, but I think we're actually going to learn a lot more about that coming into Legion. Um, but it was pretty cool to see, but go back and look into a class that I've not really mastered. Uh, I, I have a paladin, um, as you know, most people say, oh yeah, I got a paladin, but I, I can't play him. The Ashbringer is beautiful because I, oh, yeah. I acquired it and I was like, oh, I could dig it. Like, obviously I've seen pictures, but I've, I'm not, I don't melee, so. And with, what class have with you the, mastered, Lycan? <laughs> what's that? What class have you mastered? Well, he can he can roll his he can face roll his DK pretty easily. 
Sorry to interrupt. No, that's okay. It was that's a worthy okay. interruption. Oh, no. I my hats off no. to you. I needed I needed I, the funny. <laughs> that's exactly how I, I play my know. DK too. It's like you know me. Oh, Hots is playing his DK. Hots is playing his bro. You, you gotta look out of the game, man. <laughs> That's you how Hots broke. In case you guys don't know who Hots is. How, oh, see, now we do. Like now we, no. we pissed off. We people. really should be more respectful to Lycan, actually. Well, Respect your elders, oh, guys. I knew you were gonna say it. <laughs> You're gonna get us all in trouble now. Uh, well, well, we need a fifth for you, the show. Thank you, Lycan, for that. So we do have an opening for the fifth man for the team. So if you're looking to be on a podcast, just kidding. <laughs> Look at him. Oh, he, oh. <laughs> well, I'm gonna. Don't mind me. I got stuff I can do. <laughs> can you hear us? Oh no, he can't hear us. Uh, your feet smell. Well, he's gonna watch this later and be like, "What the hell?" Uh that was a fabulous. I it really, it really was. That. I really that was quite fabulous. I know my face looked kind of funny during some of that. As some of you caught that, my 19 year old. I don't know what the fuck he's doing in the hallway, but he had every car he owns. He has a, a huge car collection in his room, and he had every car he owns in his hands walking down the hallway, and they all dropped one by one. In case you didn't know, that's literally. And I'm like, can I help you? <laughs> oh, I was just going to take him downstairs. All right, keep going. Uh. I love Technically, it. the XLR is a power. And you're right. And and got to remember too, the XLR is, it's a it's a ship. It's not just a city. It's not just a big rock, but it is a ship. Ah. Uh, so I forget about that a lot. Actually. Hots has some. Um, I don't know if we should take mythic advice from him today because he's. Hey, we did all the bosses except for Manor. Hey, I'm gonna right? need you to. I'm gonna need you to. We, calm. It was our second kill, and it was three months apart. Simmer down, Alistair. Simmer down. So, Killrog, huh? The Bane? Well, you know, he wasn't too terrible, except when people didn't take the fucking heart secret to the back of the room. But outside of that, he's a fabulous mm. boss. He's... It, uh, Mythic is... Uh, there's a little bit of altercation. Like, this is the one where you actually start seeing different strategy changes. Um, so, first off, you start with different positionings. Instead of taking him, like, right there next to... Uh, like, right next to where the ads are trying to go to, and where the big ads spawn, you kind of want to take them to where, um, to the left side of the room where your range normally stack at. Um, and then all your range are going to be stacked where the other group normally sits at. You don't want to, like, you want to make sure those two groups stay separate. Um, whenever the small ads that are trying to run to the pool to become the big hulking dudes, you want to make sure you kill them. Uh, you want to kill them first. Uh, with Heartseeker, you have the range run it to the left. Check out the um, thirsters. The, yeah, the Bloodthirsters. You have the Heartseekers, um, they run it to the left. If you have Paladins, make sure you use their ability to, their, I think it's Bop, to take off the debuff from the Heartseeker, because it takes like a son of a bitch. And it takes forever in Mythic. Um, so you want to make sure that you don't have, uh, you, you want to limit the amount of raid damage that you have going out at all times, uh, because it does get a little hectic during some parts. Um, so Heartseekers are the number one priority while they're out. Um, later on in the phases, the longer that he's alive, he starts shooting more heart seekers out. So you'll start having two, and you might even start seeing three heart seekers at the and same that's, time. At the same time, oh, exact same fuck time. That noise. Yeah. Uh, so that's it, it. Can get it can definitely be a little hectic. Um, and then with the big bloodthirster ads, the hulking dudes, you want to make sure you kill them, but you want to make sure whenever they die, the group of people that you're going to send downstairs need to soak a new puddle that he drops. It's gonna be, it's just a green puddle. You need to make sure it's soaked up as uh, as big as, or as much as possible because after so long, whenever he goes to do his, uh, the the porch to go downstairs, he, those turn into another Heartseeker mob. So that can also go to the boss and heal the boss as well. Um, so you wanna make sure this gets soaked. Then the people go downstairs, you do the, you get your 20 stacks, come back upstairs. On the first wave, that's when you generally want to blow your heroes, your, uh, your three-minute cooldowns. You want to make sure that everyone is blowing the shit out of the boss to make sure you get as much burn in as possible. Because I like what you're the, saying. I like where it's going. Yeah. I'm intrigued. Keep going. Uh, you, you want to make sure you get as much damage in as possible before things start getting a little bit too hectic. And you know, you'll know you start having a little bit of downtime on the boss because of how many ads are getting pulled out and how, much thing, like how many things are going to be up at once. Um, through some of these points and then you also have you know the overlapping mechanics when everybody starts doing deadly throws and you're trying to deal with 
you know, three Bloodthirsters and a Heartseeker mob, maybe even two at the same time, half your DPS is running around because they can't stop because of deadly throws. Then you have the ads running to become the big hulking ads, and you also have an ad running to him that's going to heal him. And that that's kind of where the the fall apart starts happening in the through progression is because it, it's a lot to deal with at once. You know, you have to make sure that you're coordinating your DPS and it's split accordingly to make sure all those ads die at once. You know, um, hunters are really good, boomkins are going to be really good. Um, your solid AOE that you know, they don't necessarily have to be clustered up like you do for a warrior. Um, they do. Warriors will help in the fact that, you know, there's going to be an ad over there um, along with the boss so you can get the extra cleave damage with um, fucking, what's the word? Cleaving strikes. Sleeping strikes. That's the one. Um, but, yeah, other than that, downstairs, um, imps hit a lot harder. Um, the big the big guys will one-shot you. Um, imps can one-shot Pretty much everything can one-shot you downstairs. Um, so you have to make sure you're watching your feet at all times. And then, other than that, it's probably going to take four groups to go downstairs for your first uh, for your first kill. Maybe three, depending on where your DPS is standing. Um, but, do expect to send multiple groups down at once. And, You'll have, a, for your first group, you want to make sure you have your, your really bursty classes that also, like, you, you don't want to limit yourself, but you want, a, like, a, something like an Enhancement Shaman and an, a Mage. Uh, the Enhancement Shaman has really good, uh, solid AoE, while the Mage is going to have really good single target to burn all the things down, at, get the 20 stacks as fast as possible, come up, um, and then blow all the cooldowns, and they have really, really good, solid single target burst, so... I think our mage bursted up to 500, 600k um, with the debuff with the debuff on them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it, it's just things it's that like half of what I do. <laughs> and and your 14 to 14 mythic raids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, other than that, the strategies. It, that's the only altercation is you move the boss right, and then you have to learn to adapt to dealing with the over the overlapping mechanics, and then you're you're set. You'll get a kill. It'll be. Fun, it'll be easy. Nice. We, uh, the writers, which I was not a part of this, uh, scene because I did step out of reading. <clears throat> the, uh, the writers of Rohan are 1313 Heroic, which is not a big deal to most people because people have already cleared and been done and is now farming mythics, but it's a big deal for my guild, uh, because, you know, stuff doesn't really come easy for us. We have to work really, really hard at it. So, uh, these, my guys did get that stuff down, um, hoping that they're going to be starting mythics because I, would like to do mythics because i think it'd be nice to get a mythic kill with my guild but uh yeah they've been working really really hard so uh you know a lot of bumps along the way this is the this is the the world that you live in when you balance casual with hardcore when you want to make sure everybody can play because you don't want to be mean but you also want to make sure that other people's gameplay isn't affected by consistent wipes because the same nobody wants to put into their their dps their rotation their tune the mechanics the whole nine so we you know i'm fortunate enough to where i have a great guild <clears throat> that's uh my my raid leader who is a good friend of mine david he is able to kind of balance that and we are you know we want to help people improve while still being able to kill shit and not kill ourselves uh trying to get frustrated because we're killing we're not killing things so they did do that so they did uh, a really good job super super duper proud of them sad that i wasn't there for it but at the same time i'm sorry not sorry because sunday is I, not I day it's it's lord of the rings day when i do my homework and watch lord of the rings and catch up on all the shit that i didn't get a chance to do during the week uh jim let's uh you got a you got some things going on hopefully you didn't misspell or misspeak uh anything on your segment but uh what do you got for your pet battle segment today find out mic check is the mic okay i think you're all right too loud yes. all right well first of all shout out to you all watching thank you so much for joining us tonight uh last week we spoke about the tarot claw hatchling companion pet i hope some of you went and added that pet to your collection I also asked some of you to go to warcraftpets.com and rate the pet. Uh, most of you probably did not, and that's okay. You don't have to. I just wanted to express my passion and convince the community on how good that pet is. Uh, now I want to talk to you about epic pets. Yes, we already discussed this topic, and we're going to discuss it again. Uh, I like the developers uh, that they chose not to rush the epic pets into the game for a di few different reasons. Uh, mostly a lot of collectors would have had hundreds of pets to level up from rare to epic for, you know, and that's a lot of work. And then, of course, older content becomes easier. Uh, now, 
I did bring up this comment again because I have an idea, actually. Before I discuss my idea, I'd like to uh, just read something, actually, that the community manager wrote in the official post about it on, you know, it, they just said, you know, by not keeping rare pets and the level cap at, by keeping rare pets, excuse me, and the level cap at 25, it pushes the content creators to test their max level pet battlers in a way that's not purely by the numbers but to use different abilities, use specific pets and memorization against certain enemies, you know, for strategies. The Celestial Tournament is a great example of that, right? Now, my idea is actually, I totally changed my mind. I want epic pets in the game. I really do. Uh, I know that just goes against everything I just said. But if you think about it, I want a system that tracks pets, maybe wins, killing blows, and maybe a few other stats. And then that will allow you to eventually upgrade a pet to epic quality but not increasing the stats. So that way you address some of the concerns on why they chose not to make it a thing, and then you still have the enjoyment of having some of those epic pets. Now, I don't know if you guys think that's a silly idea or, or too much. I think it's a great idea because, you know, if you see someone and you're battling against them in a PvP pet battle and one of their three pets are epic, you know it's gone through a lot of journey and done a lot of good things and killed. So that's my idea. I think it's good. I think a lot of players will actually disagree with me, and that's okay. I actually just want to know what you guys think. So imagine like a new ranking system or statistics for your individual pets based on maybe how many PvP pet battles they've won or killing blows, and based on that, you know, they'll go up to rare quality. So I'm actually curious on what you guys think about that. Uh, yeah, that's it. I I feel like I don't... I don't PvP pet battle enough for that to be real, for any of anything to be valid on a PvP standpoint. I think I've done like a total of seven PvP pet battles and I've lost all of them. Uh, <laughs> I tried really, really hard, but it was an embarrassment of my loss too, just so we're clear. It was an embarrassment uh, in my loss. But uh, yeah, I'm all for it. If you, if you like it, I like it. I'm in. I think it addresses, because they had the concerns of, you know, not destroying old content and not having everyone having to level up hundreds of pets. I think some of the concerns were when people would be like, no, nah, it's not a good idea because you'd only have a couple epic pets eventually and it'd take a long time to level them all up. So I think that's one thing that people would be so, like, no, nah, it's a stupid idea. It, essentially, you, you mean almost like a cosmetic yeah, sort of thing. Basically. So you can, you, you can see that that pet's special, but it doesn't affect the actual gameplay per se. 100%, yeah. I, I, I'm nowhere near into pet battling as much as you are. I, I That is increasing. But that sounds like an awesome idea, man. I'd love to be able to run around like Stormwind and see some dude run past with a with a pet. And you, you can see that, yeah. that you know, that, that would, little critic. I, I, would, I, I would definitely like to see it. Kind of like the, uh, the people who play Pokemon, you know, and you finally catch that shiny Pokemon. But the epic, you know, to where you can change the appearance of it, you know, like that way it's not, you know, you're not not necessarily uh, the same generic baby blizzard bear. Okay, well, what if I wanted it to be, you know, like a baby panda bear, which they do have a baby panda bear, but, you know, what if I want to change the look of it that way, you know, kind of like a transmog for pets, if you will, but you have to level it to do so. That's a good idea. I don't know if they'd be able to do that, but I think just something to indicate that they're epic and change the look, that's a great idea. And one of the reasons why I brought it up was actually for like feedback and to bounce ideas off. I think that's a good idea, actually. I have an opinion Once about that. I think, they're, I think that would be putting entirely too much focus on pet battling, which is great. It's yeah. an element of World of Warcraft, right? But the point yeah. of World of Warcraft is not to get in there and catch them all. The point of World of Warcraft is to get in there and kill shit. So I, don't, I think that that's putting entirely too much into a small element. I'm not saying it's small and by that main nature. I'm not trying to insult you pet battlers. But I think it's a, a very small world in comparison to i keep touching the mic in comparison to what the world of warcraft is so i don't know that we want to start fucking transmogging our uh, maybe a in diaper the, maybe you could put some ruse on i don't know in the hours but, i killed with pet bowing so i'm killing tons of shit well I, they they should get a little top hat and a monocle for becoming epic if people like that <laughs> yeah kind of thing, i guess like that. i guess we could totally focus off the important things and make it about transmogging i guess well it, it's not like you would be you know it's not like it'd be <laughs> now i'm just game breaking <laughs> no, it's not like it'd be game breaking it would take a whole lot of effort to do it you know like like book said it doesn't even have to be completely redo the look of the 
just add one small little thing to it, you know, like a monocle or a top hat or, or a cane. Or maybe you could put some ruse I on, think. Your, on some your little on monkey. It. Your monkey could have some ruse. Yeah. I think it'd be easy for them to just do a color skin change, even though they've reskinned the same pet a bunch of times, <laughs> but to have maybe just Dude, like a... Just... a Earning a yeah. gold one, like a gold person. Valid. All valid. Well, um, don't, don't mind Bill. She's just think? obsessed with animals wearing underwear. I don't know what you're talking about. But uh, tell us what you think. If you are not watching this live and uh, you're watching this on YouTube or listening to this on iTunes, make sure you give us your opinion. Tell us what you think. Uh, what do you think about the pet battle situation? Would you like to see some transmogging? Should your monkeys wear bras and underwears? I don't know. The sky's the limits where Blizzard is concerned. <laughs> uh, so I do want to tell you guys, Dest Destro, I was going to say Destruction, but Destro is not available in Legion yet. It's not open for play, so here I am on my level 110 Warlock. Because they're taking it out. Can't yeah, destruction. Be better. Can't destruction because it's not open. So I'm not going to affliction. I would rather kill myself. So I, I demode. Two things I want to say. You are able to see the spells that you'll have as destruction because the skill book still has those spells. They just haven't allowed you to play it yet. So good from a warlock perspective to see some of the things that I have missed about being my type of warlock. The life tap, which isn't new to the other specs, but we haven't had it since... I think they took Life Tap and Kata. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure they took Life Tap and Kata. My drain life is there. My health funnel's there. All these things. The Reign of Fire. They've beefed up the damage. The damage was triple. Obviously, I know it's alpha. But it's nice to see the things that I've been missing. So even though I can't play Destro yet, if you guys fancy Destro, I did get a chance to go out there and see the stuff. And I am literally like, I'm so stoked. So now let's talk about my PvP endeavors. I did play Demonology. It's really difficult to play a class that or a spec that you don't normally play. I just had to rely on my natural warlock instincts at this point because there was no guide on how to how to demo in alpha. Um, so I queue for Battleground hour and a half later, still in the queue. Finally, I talk in trade chat. I'm like, hi, is the fucking queue broke? And everybody's like, yeah, there's there's the queue doesn't work. So I decided to do skirms. So I did post, you know, RIP whoever gets me as a partner because I've never demoed before in my life. So we're just going to go ahead and figure this shit out. So a couple minutes later, I finally get popped in and I tell my partner, just so you know, I'm not going to fight this round. I want to check out because it was the new map, uh, one of the new arena maps, which is the, what did I say it was called? The Asha... Ashman. Ashman. So he was like, no, you're cool. Do your thing. It's, it's alpha. Nobody cares. So I went in and... Um, the other opposing person was very rude and didn't let me just kindly look around. They were like, no, you're not going to check shit out. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start attacking you. But I did get to see it, uh, and I told you guys earlier that it's beautiful. Lots of places for you to LOS. Uh, it's good for both the warlocks so that I can kind of cast and move um, because as demonology, there's quite a few different abilities where you can cast and move, such as your channeled cast um, that you get. Now, uh, I'm still kind of fidgeting calling the demons because you have your call Dreadstalker, and there's, I, it, it's a little bit because I don't demo very often. I did struggle. I just, at this point, was just clicking shit on the keyboard just while I was trying to look at stuff. But um, I could tell you that my partner, who uh, I want to say that my partner was a rogue, literally got annihilated within, like, a matter of seconds. I turned around, and he was dead. And I was like, oh, well, it's just me. It's me and this other guy. The, the other guy's partner was dead. Um, but it was really, really quick. And I know we've been over kind of uh, the way that they've talked about it. And I know that they recently did. Let me find the... I want to find the post because there was some talk about how... Um, I wanted to go over what they... One of the game designers had talked about some of the changes that they had. So one of the things that we all know is when it comes to anything in alpha, it's always overpowered. Everything is damage, damage, damage. Frost mages. Oh my god. One shot by a frost mage. Okay, these guys... Seriously, frost mages in alpha right now? This shit is fucking insane. Um, so one thing that uh, Holinka had talked about and um, uh, Desvin, who's one of the game designers specifically gearing towards PvP, is that they wanted arenas to be quick and bursty. They want you to go in. They want you to be able to burst down your opposing target and be done with the situation, right? They don't want to drag out the fight, you know, for three or four minutes. They want you to go in and have some of these classes. They're going to be your quick heavy hitters with burst damage. And then you have the rest of the, the people duke it out when they're off cooldown, right? Or when they've blown all their cooldowns and whatever. I did like how quick the matches were. 
even from and naturally that's because I was on a spec that I don't play I doubt I would have I probably would have lasted longer had I have you know been on something that I understood a little bit more it was really weird seeing um some stuff there like my drain life and my life tap and stuff that is available for demo as well seeing that there I kind of had forgotten kind of how to use those elements so I want to talk to you about uh the honor system so the way that the honor system is set up, that's going to be where you're going to get your your customization for your tomb when it comes to PvP. Every arena we lost, so I don't know what that means for a win, but I think I averaged like 30 to 40 honor points on the system. The scale of honor points, I think that's what I I was able to acquire per arena. So it's not terrible for you to try to, you know, to get this honor and you're doing your things battlegrounds might be might be larger i'm trying to find um i know that there was a little thing that i had I'm trying to see if i have it um so for levels one through ten as far as your honor level because it goes up to level 50 that's the max you can get for honor right now currently from levels one through ten that's 750 honor for levels 11 through 20, that's 875 honor. Levels uh, 21 through 30 is 1,000 honor. Um, 31 through 40 is 1,125 honor. And 41 through 50 is 1,250 honor. So it takes a total of 50,000 honor to reach level 50. Also keep in mind, my numbers are going to be inaccurate as far as per squirm and per battleground, like the 20 honor, because it's it's alpha. They want people to honor pretty quickly. They want to see people get to that max so that they can mm -hmm. test each level and how that prestige works out. So um, those numbers are probably not going to be the same numbers that we're going to be that we're going to be dealing with. So because it was alpha, I didn't have to go and get gear. I came in level 110, fully geared with the vindictive gear. Uh, all versatility, I don't really understand that from a demonology standpoint. So I seen everything had versatility on. I was like, hello? Uh, I think you're pushing too much for versatility. It's, like, it's, it's, awful. it's starter gear. At the same time, that's gonna. it's not going to be the max level gear. Yeah, but and still. they haven't balanced all the stats between it all. You know, like they're not done fidgeting with all the classes and they're going to have to make sure that the gear is kind of balanced between all three specs. Yeah, but all that so. versatility is ugly. And then the racial passive for the humans versatility. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I still have the every man for himself. They haven't, they haven't dealt with that yet. That's still there. Um, in case you guys are wondering about that, it's still there. Um, it does, the, the cooldowns are different on it now, but um, the first thing you get at level when you first are starting your PVP is you get the medallion. So you get the trinket that you know, removes the stun and parry effects. That's the first thing you get. And I think it's like every couple of, of um, honor levels you get. I think it's like every two honor levels you get to pick a new talent. Now the talents, it's really, it's going to be difficult for me to talk about the talents unless you guys want me to break a class by class down after I do the order halls. We might be able to do a class each episode as far as breaking down the PvP talents for my Bells Bites because it's all going to be set up based off that specific class um, as far as the talents go. But just kind of checking out from a Warlock perspective, I'm pretty happy with the stuff that I'm seeing because a lot of it's things I'm going to use. And I'll tell you one thing. The feel of going into this, I want to see from a heals perspective. So I do plan on going in as a monk. Oh boy, monk healing looks so much fun. I was able to kind of dick around and, and, and do some healing on a training dummy uh, in my order hall. It It's different seeing all the damage spells because we it's no the stances have been removed right you don't have to be in a certain stance to be able to use your damage spells so if you're you're you know you're you're doing your fist weaving you don't have to swap stances it's just there so it's fucking bizarre being i know jim you're probably gonna you're have a meltdown because it's super oh yeah they're way overpowered right now guys the the healing monk that is literally out of fucking control Good, some they of the, need to be some of the things though you have to pick and choose from just like with all the classes in Legion where things are that are normal to us we're going to have to pick and choose between them. Some of the warlock stuff I kind of started to have a little small meltdown because things they were making me choose between I was like wait huh? What do you mean I have to choose between I can't have my teleport and my my sacrificial pact. I have to choose between having my personal port and having my bubble. <coughs> so essentially I was cursing at the monitor this whole I, I was cursing at the monitor yesterday I was like fuck you Blizzard fuck you. But understandable, that's two ways of protecting myself from a warlock standpoint. It's needed. However, it's a little bit overpowered. So I totally get why they forced me. I still get my gate, but my personal portal, which saves me in a lot of areas, um, they're making me choose between that and my bubble. So, I mean, I understand why Blizzard's doing it. I'm not hateful about it. I just, it's going to be one of those things where it's like, 
I don't know whether to, ch- I mean, how do you choose between two children? You, what do you, what do you do? You don't, uh, you just pick one and hope. So that's, I think which one, you figure out which one's going to be more successful and you go with that one. I mean, that's just, that's, I think, it, I think a lot of it's going to be situational. Um, like if you're in an arena and you have a, someone like you, you're, you're running with Jim and you've run with Jim a lot. If you're like, hey, I need to run back, like you know, like we need to fall back, you know, because we we try to push in, we didn't get anything done. Now we need to play a little bit more defensive. Well, if you're playing with a healer that you don't really know and you don't know where the fuck they're gonna go, probably gonna need sacrificial pack because you can't trust him to save your ass if For you sure. go blink behind the corner, you know. Uh, so, so in case you guys need a little bit refreshing as far as how the PvP is concerned, you guys know there's no more um, honor and conquest currencies. That's been, that's a thing of the past. Uh, honor points instead increase your honor level, which is what, you know, we're talking about when you're doing that. As you increase your honor, um, you also get gold, you get artifact power uh, for your weapon, and you get your honor talents, which is going to be reminiscent of reforging right not reminiscent but a customization that we're going to get which i'm digging i'm digging that we're going to be able to get something that we can kind of theory craft a little bit on what's going to work best for us it, depending upon the comp that we're doing whether it's threes or if we're doing rbgs and, and we need something specific as far as talents go i'm excited to be able to have a vast array of choices again so i'm pretty fucking stoked about that um so for pvp content you'll get a preset uh, set of stats for your specialization. Your set bonuses, enchants, legendary bonuses, and trinkets will be deactivated. So essentially, what people have been bitching about is they wanted a separation. You wanted PvP to be separate from, from PvE. Well, now it's done. So they're basically making it where when one thing affects PvP, it doesn't necessarily affect, affect PvE, which is what we were looking for. Um, gear can still improve your character in PvP, but just to kind of explain an example, a 25 item level difference will result in a 2.5 percent difference not a 25 percent difference so it's not going to be so easy or hard it's just it is what it is there's no um trickery fuckery in that nature as far as being able to cheat the system as far as gear goes um there's no specific pvp stats or fluctuating item levels in legion so um you it, there's that's just going to be a thing of the past the PvP oh, gear, I can hear it now. which I still love, is uh, the, vin- the vin- bleh, 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 bleh. Vindictive, which I think is pretty legit because I'm a warlock, so naturally me and Vindictive go, you know, kind of hand in hand. Um, the end of PvP rewards will be awarded separately on top of the percentage of players in each faction, not the overall player base, which is pretty fucking awesome. Um, and then the prestige levels reach honor level 50, which grants access to high level PvP talents or you can turn your honor level and gain a prestige level for to include the rewards. So titles, artifact appearance, mounts, pets, the whole nine. If you guys already play in Call of Duty and all this other shit where you've already dealt with that, you already know what's coming. For those of us that don't, Call of Duty, uh, I don't fuck any of that means, but my husband tells me that it's going to be great. So I'm just going to go by what he's telling me and just stick my thumb up and be like, cool. Um, and then we talked about the, the mounts, which... They use the same, you know, it's the same, the same type. They don't really go too far from kind of that element. Um, but That's hard, not the... uh, no, you don't have to, you don't have to PVP build your artifact weapon. You do get specific PVP artifact power that you can earn as you're progressing. Um, so it doesn't, it has nothing to, one doesn't have anything to do with the other. It's just, you get it's in addition to um so you don't have to do uh you don't have to do any of that for pvp that's completely separate so my overall take on what i was able to do keep in mind guys i wasn't able to do what i wanted until my specs available until my spec is available i was literally clunking around like a fucking retard because i am trying to do something that i don't know how to do so i'm thinking this week i'll probably take the monk in and try to get a heal perspective rather than a dps perspective since i do monk heal and pvp it should be easier for me to uh to figure things out so i will take the monk in this week but what i what i did see is i'm not unhappy I didn't get to test Battlegrounds, which to me, that's most important. I could give two shits about arenas. I care about Battlegrounds. I want to see where we stand. I want to see I want to see how the changes of the classes are, are affecting um, the Battlegrounds. So hopefully this week, if they can get this from Alpha to Beta, we'll be able to have more access and more people. It's so exclusive now that the queue times... <sighs> Guys, it's it's a rough life out there. Um, it's really, really, really a struggle. Also, to end out my segment, 
I was really sad to not see glyphs. I, it didn't, the weight of not seeing a tab that you're so used to seeing hit me very real when I look down there and I go to click instinctively and I'm like, oh, there's nothing there. There's no mm. tab. There's no nothing. I haven't seen obtaining them because I know you can glyph specific spells now. I haven't been that deep into it um, just because the, the alpha access comes and goes. So... Uh, I will, one thing, we'll make one thing you should be excited about is for things like Warsong Gulch, where you know you're trying to work as a team to kill the flag carrier and whatnot, and you know you or you're just getting ruffle stomped with all the new burstiness that's going to be happening. One person you can go take out a flag carrier pretty easily. Well, and it's it's limited burstiness in that sense, and that's yeah. one of the things that he talked about. Is they're just they're trying. It's difficult to balance PvP. At the end of the day, we all had high hopes of, of Warlords of Draenor. Even I was at the top of the list of the Faith in Blizzard. Like everything, we're all gonna play what we want just because it's awesome. And then the first person told me to roll affliction. I was like, "Fuck you, I'm done." So <laughs> clearly, we realize we can't live in a world where PvP can be balanced because it's it's naturally gonna be unbalanced you have to have some classes that are overpowered and underpowered in order for the system to work right it just if everybody was at the same level okay yeah it would the, be the skill cap would be differently and people would have to play based off their skill but i think i think naturally you have to have that class that you're terrified of that class where you know you go head to head and you know you're going to lose your ass at the end of the day you might as well just lie down because you know you're going to lose so you still give it the good old jolly effort, and then skill can often pull you out of that. But I, I think, yeah, glyphs, there's no glyph tab. There's nothing. There's no, the tab is gone. I don't know if somebody ate it. I don't know. What the, I just literally was like, oh, that's. Remember, you're going to be augmenting now your yeah. spells. Yeah. You're, but he's, Stone's referencing the minor glyphs. You're, mm. you're creaking. Knock it off. Uh, he's going to be doing the. There, you can do minor glyphs, but I didn't see that tab. I know he's trying really hard not to creak. You need to mute. <laughs> yes, oh. you. Yes, you. God. Can't take him anywhere. Anywhere. Uh, so, overall, from what I did see, the direction that they're going in is not scary. So, for those of you that are terrified of what's happening and happening in PvP, it's going to be okay. I was the last man standing in an arena. Now, I granted, I'm a oh, warlock. Cheap, I'm always, but. I'm usually the first burst of class down. It just is what it is. Somebody sees me on the opposing team and they're like, fuck you, we need to take out the Fear Factory. That bitch with her Chaos Bolts have got to go. Granted, I wasn't Destruction, I was Demo. But the little Dreadstalkers are adorable. It was quite fun to play. Um, it, the damage was quite nice. Uh, I was, it was fun to play. It's not, it wasn't terrible. The little, little Dreadstalkers and then you had the little imps. And I'm pretty sure I saw one of the little imps riding a Dreadstalker, which was really weird to me. And I was just like, oh... He tamed him. Cool. Um, but, yeah. So, uh, it was... I, I, I am... From somebody who PvPs currently, I was terrified of some of the changes and worried about the direction they were going into. But from a, a non-pro perspective, right? I'm not your I'm not your Bajir. I'm not your Swifty. I'm not your guys that are that are super glad status, that are have all the things to say about it. From my perspective, I did qu I had quite a good time. Uh, it was quite enjoyable. And this is just alpha. A lot of a lot of changes. There's going to be a lot. I almost said twerking. Uh, a lot of different things are going to be coming this way. So I think that's going to be... Um, I think that's good. And I, for one, am excited. And that's pretty much my... That's my Bell's Bites. Um, I will do some more research. If there's some aspect or element that you're interested in me going to check out for you, um, send me an email. Send me a Facebook message. Send me a tweet. Tell me that there's something you want me to go check out. I'll go capture some video um, and I'll give you the get down on that specific situation as it's happening. Holy lot of stuff to say. I literally say I did a lot of research on that, so I was really happy that I got to talk about all those things. Uh, what's happening? Are you waving? I'm waving to the people. Oh, you're okay. I didn't know what was happening. Let's no, I've got, I've got cramps in my bits. Oh, got <laughs> so it. I'm like cramps waving. in the bits. That's not my something bits. you hear from Brooke every day. Yeah. Uh, Lycan, what did you do this weekend? Wow. Uh, more mount runs, of course. Still don't have life, main, life finders. Thanks, book. Really appreciate it. That's what you get um, from Death Note. <laughs> now, getting a little bit closer to the beloved title. Um, almost done with Black Temple, finally. Almost done with uh, 
no, I just started on Molten Core, and that's one of those ones I just don't want to have to go through ever again. But this will be my third tune I'll be getting is on with that. And I'm actually looking to start groups up for anybody who wants to do Blood Cell Admirals. And then exalted back with the four goblin races that, you know, Insane Booty Bay. Yeah. I have so that heard... title, and I'm... Uh, yeah, no. Never again? again, man. Never <laughs> again. I got Blood Cell Admiral and Wrath, and no. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm, that's where I'm at. Child with... and Wrath. Somebody else got it for you. Right. Bullshit. I went on my DK and went... <laughs> I'm very sad that you're not getting any of your mounts, and I feel like it's because people stole all the mount juju. Like, all the mount juju has been stolen and robbed from you, and I'm pretty, I'm pretty sad about that. Maybe well, he got invincible, didn't he? Who, me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I got invincible. I still ride around with that. I think also, he's doing looking, okay. Looking forward to, to was it next week? Yeah, I think Wednesday starts the Wrath... Uh, I'm time walking. walking, and I finally get that mount because I've been saving them five thousand coins just for nice, that. Nice, yeah. nice, nice, nice. I need to start getting back with that as well. Pretty much it. Uh, bloke, what'd you do this weekend, Mom? I started learning to do pet paddles. That's scary. And and I, I had the expert advice of of Jim <laughs> Banks alongside me. Um, I, I decided to practice what I preach and and had a crack at it, and and I've been doing that every day to. The inside the garrison, you can get a couple of different toys, a couple of different pets. So I've been doing that. And once I get my head around it a bit more, I'll venture out into the wide world to to see how it goes. But other than that, uh, did a bit of raiding, did a bit of this, did a bit of flying around on my life binders. And then really the the biggest thing for me this week was trying to figure out which, uh, which edition of uh, Legion. I want to buy whether I'm going to lash the money out to buy another collector's edition or a standard one. Or, well, you could buy the, the standard and then upgrade later. Um, so it's kind mm-hmm. of like a payment plan in a sense. Just throwing yeah, that out there. yeah, it's one of those things. It's it. I've noticed. Uh, I've noticed the pricing's gone a little bit <coughs> haywire lately, uh, especially for those that are planning to buy Overwatch. Um, the the 189. Australian dollars for the collector's edition of Overwatch. Uh, I can't justify that for a I game. I don't like Le- the price of games, period, date lately. I went I, to go buy Division I, yesterday because I was like, fuck it. I'm going to jump on the bandwagon and play with my boys because my boys all play Division. And I'm not paying $100 for that bullshit. Tom Clancy can blow me. Sorry. I, uh, I ranted about non-wow shit and I don't even care. It's just, I'm having I, a bad I, day anyway. I'm so horrified. Uh, g- gaming, game, game prices has always been a bugbear of mine, but $189. Yeah, like, I'm one of the yeah. few people that will back Blizzard. Which one's no that worries. for? Overwatch. You know, and that, and that, what do you get? You you only get the Spirit of Seventy Six. You get you get the soundtrack. You, and... you get a soldier and a book and some like it's a hundred dollars, yeah. hundred or eighty dollars more. I feel sorry for the people in Namibia who have to pay fourteen fifty for it. So that's uh, one thousand four hundred and fifty Namibian dollars for. Uh, our, <laughs> Might as well be Namib- playing in rupees. Paying in rupees. Uh, uh, I do actually have that conversion here. It's twelve fifty, by the way. <laughs> No, no, so like literally the last three days, I've been sitting there trying to figure out whether I want to shell out close on, like a large number, buy... Larry. That would be me. I have the biggest penis in the podcast, <laughs> just because Whoa. I know your choice. Pennies. But I want, I want you to know. He's oh, like I, you misspelled it, but I mine's bigger than all of theirs. I I'll, I'll I have, have a to sword decide. Sword anyone? I'm in. A, 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 a collector's edition of Legion and a collector's edition of Overwatch. While I love collect- getting the collector's editions, for the price of both those things, that's a ticket to BlizzCon. And when you weigh it up like that, like that's just fucking ridiculous. Mm-hmm. So, well, Christmas happens, yeah. and the Christmas is a joyous time of year. Uh, that's all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Could be worse. Could Probably would have talked know about how, that. But it could be. Like bullshit, but I forgot to write it down somewhere. You did forgot to write it down. So because you forgot to write it down, you didn't have a bloke's bullshit segment. <laughs> Wrecked. I, I love you so much. You were recovering. You've had a rough week of... I'm not allowed to say the words that would describe my week generally. I can't either. It's been a rough week for me. An angry pregnant lady is within striking distance of me, and she doesn't like those kinds of words. No. Uh, Hots, what did you do this weekend, Wow. Uh, raiding actually, you know, had a little bit of fun with it because we did a re-clear and, you know, it was fun to go back and just kind of walk through something and, you know, 
assert the dominance, if you will, like, you know, show, go back and, you know, walk through things that we've done many, many of times. We've earned the right, like, we've earned the gear and earned the, and put together the skill to do so and, you know, one shot a lot of things that, where we had troubles, you know, especially when we're approaching, I think we just hit 450 wipes on Archimon. S, so, S especially. That's like yeah. ask you a question. It's especially. Especially. Don't. Espresso. Don't judge me on my southern. Especially. That's habits. not southern. That's like five year old. That's not southern. Especially. I do like your southern accent. Anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure you knew. It was <laughs> but uh, they um, other than that, it was it was a good week. Like a garrison stuff. You know, the fun stuffs. Yeah. Too funny. Let me ask you a question. It's not axe. <laughs> uh, I want to ask me anything. Question. You're like Ace Ventura <laughs> when he bends over and he's playing with his butt. He's like, I must ask you a question. Uh, I was Jimmo, totally going to attempt to Jimmo, demonstrate that. This week in I WoW. did have a week in WoW. You um, did? I did. I opened up 30, 60 satchels. I saved up all the satchels from the pet battle garrison and I'm like, I'm going to record this. And I only got one pet out of it. I got a bunch of stones, but uh, I think Jane. the... Yeah, I don't so know. Uh, so you're a wild stoner now? A what? You're a wild stoner now? No, I don't know what that means. What do you mean? Wild stones? Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Horrible. I know. Horrible. Horrible. Three. Holy paranoia. <laughs> Is he out? <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, I one. also that made... Was legit. <laughs> yeah, I... <laughs> I... I made three videos for the Warcraft Pets channel, uh, Pet Battles channel, excuse me, and today I realized I said the pet's name wrong throughout the entire video. That's what we mentioned at the start of the video or our podcast was the mechanical axe beak, not axe break. <laughs> I was like even rhyming words with axe break, saying how great it was, and like it was just <laughs> so stupid. Uh, so I've taken that video down, and I'll have to redo it, and... Uh, I did some skirmishes today with my man Donovan. Uh, thank you for the games. And yeah, that's about it. Just those mastering those garrison missions and a little bit of PvP, and that was my week. Awesome. Uh, I did... I don't know what the fuck I did this week. I was going to make up some bullshit right now. I'm going to be really honest. I did not do a whole lot of WoW this week. Uh, I... I did not do a whole lot of WoW. Um, I haven't had a lot of time for it. I've had other things that I needed to take care of priority-wise as far as uh, our stuff going on. Um, we got some stuff going on in the background. Uh, Pwncast Esports is underway. Uh, Hots is working really, really hard on that endeavor. Uh, we'll be announcing that here probably within the next week or so uh, once we have everything buttoned up and Hots is done doing his thing. But, uh, yep, Pwncast Esports is happening. Um, so I've been helping uh, do the other stuff, and I just have a lot of stuff. I'm just going to keep saying stuff. Because I don't know what else to say about that. But I do want to make sure uh, our Blair. our admin, it is his birthday today. I was supposed to make a birthday post, but I did uh, remove myself from Facebook for the weekend. So I have uh, no Facebooks. Um, I was hoping one of my other admins would post it, but they did not. Uh, and I tried to get a hold of one of my admins via text message, and I didn't get a response. But Devin, I love you. He is also Loxo. It is his birthday. Uh, he happy birthday. You know, happy birthday. Happy birthday birthday to him. Uh, oh. Birthdays are a good thing. And yes, that was next on my list of things to talk about. We did launch a Teespring campaign. Now, a lot of you might not understand what this Teespring campaign means and what's it all about. But the shirt, it is DitchCon. The purpose of the shirt, anywhere you go with a group of friends, somebody's going to get lost. It is the manner of group in general, whether it's BlizzCon, whether it's GamesCon, whether it's Phoenix. Comic Con, wherever con you go to, or the shopping center, any any group setting you go to with a bunch of nerds, things just got out of control, and you would turn around and somebody would be gone. You turn around, and you'd be with a whole different group of people. Ditch con is a thing, so we do have a nice little Teespring campaign, which I'm pretty sure, like in did link. I'll also make sure I'll link it mm -hmm. for the YouTube and iTunes folks in the description of the show. Uh, go secure yours. I think it's only going for another 11 days or so. Um, so 15 days, 22 hours, yeah, 34 15 minutes, days. Go get 16 your shirts. seconds. Uh, if, I mean, they're pretty legit. It's got all your major players on the front, uh, and DitchCon and Pwncast on the back. So and we're just going to keep spamming the chat because it's how we roll. Uh, oh, yeah. So make sure you guys go get that. Uh, go check that out. Um, we do have uh, other stuff in the works in the future. So make sure you guys get a hold of your shirts. We do have a hoodie and a tank top there. 
Uh, and a little baby onesie too uh if you have a, a, a little mini child uh that you want to buy that for so make sure you go and do the teespring things so i think we are getting to that time where we're going to go ahead and wrap things up uh because i do know that jim does have i don't want to say it's a date with another man but <clears throat> i know that he's going on a date with a man so are you cheating you, on me you guys can just take that where you want to take it and let let your imaginations. Yes, yeah, so let's turn all the gay thinking towards Jim. Except we, we know it's probably you he's going on the date with if we're going to have to theory craft. It's going to take me some out for some nice maple syrup. Well, well Rich, Richard isn't there yet. So, yeah, She'll you be have here in, in a couple days, actually. I'm, I'm going to go shopping tomorrow. I'm going to buy all the lactose-free things because she's got, she's got a tummy problem with the lactose, and I can't eat red meat. I mean, I can't eat red meat, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... I've been doing meal planning so I can make sure... Uh, we have recipes appropriate. And meals are a big deal in my house, so I want to make sure that uh, she can actually eat and enjoy the food. Um, mm. Don't I'm forget not the hot like I, I am with know. Cody or with Hot. Sorry, to use your slave name. I try to slip him aspartame because he's he's allergic to it, like deathly allergic. And every now and then I'm like, here, just have this, have this. What is it? What is that sugar I like, Cody? Splenda. It's Splenda. I couldn't even think of the name. I'm not. I'm off my game today, guys. If you notice me acting a little bit weird, I'm a little bit off my game. Uh, I will be right as rain. Uh, coming back next week i promise um <clears throat> with that being said make sure you go to pwncastdailyquest.com see what we got going over there um and uh make sure you follow and subscribe and do all the things that you guys are lovely and awesome doing and uh thank you guys for joining us live i appreciate it uh live didn't almost happen uh, literally a few minutes before the show i was like okay i guess we're going live uh my because... mic's still not working your mic is and then we had all the and then we had all problems. the tech issues because i was stressing so we're gonna go ahead and get on out of here thank you for spending your hour and a half with us every week uh we do appreciate it if you did not get to catch the live show um you're seeing this on itunes and we appreciate your patronage I, is it patronage what is it called even patronage well i mean they don't pay for thank it. you for joining us kind people of the twitch and itunes worlds and YouTube's and all the stuff. But we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and get the... And the book faces. And the book face. We're going to go ahead and get the hell on out of here, guys. Uh, it's been a rough week. We will see you next week. Make sure you hashtag AskPwnCast if you have questions on Twitter uh, for next week's episode. We're going to go ahead and get on out of here. Piggy the Pwncast. Is that... Should we By do... Lord of the Sea. <laughs> should we do YouTube Red or is that Red 2? No, that's... Red. I can't do anything porn related. That's all. Oh, mean. that's YouTube Red. Okay, okay. Yeah, Sorry. Uh, I, I didn't get that... Is it you? Is it Red Tube? Red Tube's the bad stuff, right? Red Tube's the point. Red Tube's the season. the quality of the stream.